Shams Al Marif by Ahmed Al Booney, The Cosmos. Welcome. Yes, a big welcome to you. So, this is another update in my series about the Shams Al Marif by Ahmed Al Booney. It focuses on the uh, Ptolemaic cosmos and how important this is to understanding the Shams Al Marif. In particular, it builds on my previous vlog on Sihir or sorcery. Islamic science. Uh, well, I've heard argued that the word magic um, or sorcery is misinterpreted, especially within the traditional learning of Islam. It's only recently that the Western view of science has been applied within Islam, and this sort of precludes magic, astrology and alchemy as being something well, the many see as forbidden, haram. Traditionally, all have been won, and Muslims have an obligation to pursue knowledge. So this would include the, the occult. Solomon is really the prototype for this knowledge, including his occult knowledge. Many would argue that he had command of the jinn. Indeed, 72 jinns are listed as being under Solomon's command, parallel in the Catholic notion of 72 demons. Uh, whilst not the same as Solomonic magic, there is a tradition of trying to re recreate, or Western Solomonic magic, there's a tradition of trying to recreate the ring or seal of Solomon and the staff to enable this command with the world of the jinn in Islam. The modern Western idea of licensing professionals and systems for approved, particularly approved scientific activities, underlies the attack uh, by some Muslims, and I keep saying a minority, and they are, on Shams al-Marif. In general, the evil eye itself is not seen as magic. It does not require anything other than the power of the mind, so... And that is less t controversial. Uh, talismanic magic is probably in between. Some would see it as seher and forbidden, whereas others see it as uh, useful, particularly if it's used for protection against magic. Uh, angels and angel magic, not so controversial. Although some angels are believed to be served by jinn, there's a corresponding angel, a jinn to an angel. In fact, the angels, in common with the Abrahamic uh, religion's beliefs, actually are there to keep the order of the cosmos, although th this belief is much stronger in Islam, maybe. And uh, this is sometimes in, with the assistance of their corresponding jinns. So there's a sort of a grey line between angel and jinn magic. Uh, but angel magic is, is very important to Islamic science. Indeed, there are even direct doers or prayers to angels and talisman devoted to them. Uh, despite some Muslims suggesting that this is shirk, in other words, polytheism. Al-Kindi and the Ptolemaic Cosmos. Abu Yusuf uh, Yaqub ibn Ishaq al-Saba al-Kindi, 18, 18, uh, 801 to 873 AD, uh, was an Arab Muslim philosopher, polymath, math mathematician, physician and music theorist. He was the first of the Islamic peripatetic philosophers and is hailed as the father of Arab philosophy. He worked in the House of Wisdom, the Bayat al-Hikmah, an institute of translation and learning patronised by the Asbadid caliphs in Baghdad. And, and as the name implies, I mean, they, they took works from other languages and translated them largely into Arabic. Um, 
uh, including Persian into Arabic, but particularly Greek texts. In, in his writings, one of Alkindi's central concerns was to demonstrate uh, the compatibility between philosophy and natural theology on the one hand, and revealed the or, or, um, more speculative theology on the other, uh, though in fact he rejected speculative theology. Uh, whilst this philosophical approach was not always original, indeed much of it can be traced back to the Hellenic, he was and was considered clumsy by later thinkers, mainly because he was the first philosopher uh, writing in the Arabic language. He successfully incorporated Aristelian, although the word Aristelian is something as a, of a misnomer because little of it, if any, came directly from Aristotle, and Neoplatonist thought into an uh, Islamic philosophical framework. In other words, he inserted Allah into the Aristotelian cosmos. <coughs> Al-Kindi took his view of the solar system from Ptolemy, who placed the Earth at the centre of a series of concentric spheres uh, in which the known heavenly bodies, the Moon, Mercury, Venus, the Sun, Jupiter and Mars, Mars and the stars, are embedded in one of his treatises on the subjects, he said that the bodies are rational entities whose circular motion is obedient to uh, and the worship of God, rather than the purely mechanistic view of these from the Hellenics. However, he is ambish, uh, ambiguous when it comes to the actual process by which the heavenly bodies affect the heavenly, uh, the material world. One theory posits in his works is from Aristotle, who conceived that the movement of these bodies caused friction in the sublunar region. So below the, below the lunar region is what we see as the material world, which steers up, stirs up the primary elements of the earth, fire, air and water. And these combine to produce everything in the material world. An alternative view uh, is found in his treatise on rays, in which the planets exercise an influence in straight lines. In each of these, he presents two fundamentally different views of physical interaction, actions by contacts and actions at a distance. Now, this concept of rays is, is very important with his in within Islamic science, so if we think of um, astrology, it's believed that the planets have an influence on us via these rays. The importance of the cosmos. Well, the cosmos underpins Shams al Marif, that everything has a place and a role. Uh, the cosmos. I have to say, refers to much more than simply the arrangements of the planets. It embodies order in the sense of what I call the universe, or my wife calls alam, which, which means nature. Um, indeed, it's the angels which are charged with ensuring this order. So, when we talk of, when I sometimes talk of, of karma... I'm not really talking about what the new age sees karma. It's simply the angels trying to achieve these ba this balance. Now, the angels are charged with this, but they don't have free will. They just have to try and achieve this balance. That's, that's what they do. That's their job. So, therefore, it's not really about good and evil, uh, but just differing and sometimes conflicting purposes. They, they need to achieve this balance. As I say, above all, this cosmos seeks balance. So if you yourself experience misfortune, etc., it's often not about you. It's, it's, it's not about you being good and evil and being punished or rewarded. It's just about this balance. Uh, so even the darkest elements of black magic maybe have a place. In Java, at least, this view seems to be influenced by the tantric. Although those that are the most dangerous are those which have the greatest degree of controversy surrounding it. 
Now you'll have heard me argue that God's light is everywhere. So there is no evil, just you could say an absence of light, but I, I think light is everywhere, so just less light. It's not even darkness, it's, an, it's less of the light. Indeed, having found this light, it's apparent to me that this is all that matters. I don't have to be a Kajal, I don't have to be a Sufi, I don't even have to be a Muslim. I don't have to consider good and evil, even within my daily jihad. Simply to allow the light to fill me, to fill me with love and bliss, and to follow this light, to allow the light to be my guide, because that is all that matters. Now this light is, is believed to be transmitted by the angels through the cosmos to the four elements. Because angels simply carry God's light. They don't have free will, as I say. So they're not thinking about it. They're just carrying God's will through this light. As I've argued in the vlog on the Islamic horoscope, the idea of planetary hours and days came to the West via the Islamic world. Although probably, well, well no, definitely originally from the Hellenic tradition, because this is what we're talking about, Ptolemy's cosmos. Indeed, the zodiac we use in the West really comes from the Islamic world. Uh, but in common with the Indian tradition, to, read, to really understand one's horoscope, one really needs to use the planetary date and hour. And indeed, Islam, of course, uses the lunar calendar. So it's a very individual thing using the, the um, lunar calendar. Again, this would refer to the Ptolemaic cosmos. And it's this timing within the cosmos that's so important in the creation of Talisman. Um, Tawis. And the practice of magic. Jinn magic. Well, of course, jinn magic is the most controversial, as calling on other entities could be seen as sheer, i.e. Polyth uh, polytheism. But traditionally, in Islam was non-dualist, so everything is in its place because Allah wills it. So Allah created jinn. You know, doesn't mean to say that we have to interact with them, but Allah created jinn, and, and if we do interact with them, yes, we have free will, but clearly Allah wished it. Although I'd argue that um, not without some mental gy gymnastics to make a convincing case that it's polytheism. As I've argued, the jinn are not necessarily bad and certainly I wouldn't describe them as evil. Uh, but it's the interaction with them that is problematic to... I wrote here most Muslims, but I, I probably should say many because I'm not certain that it is actually most Muslims. Uh, there's also an esoteric tradition about Muhammad himself petitioning jinn after creating a circle. And that is contained within an hadith, albeit an esoteric hadith. Uh, there's a tradition of jinn residing in bathrooms and unclean places and you may have heard me talk about bathrooms and our, our toiletry habits um, as somehow seeming very important to the practice of magic. And this goes some way to explaining the very strong taboos associated with bathrooms and with our toiletry habits within Islam, I including... Um, including our ablutions, including when we take wudu, the ritual purification before prayers. Uh, jinns are seen as having domains in the same way as angels do. And indeed, as I've said, that often these are the same domains. Uh, these domains are discussed by Albuni, listing the names of jinns associated with them, including the, 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 the associated planets within the cosmos. Albuni shows that these jinns can be petitioned to support specific outcomes. Uh, but these outcomes are also linked to this higher angelic power. So in other words, the jinns are linked to specific outcomes 
uh, but they are linked to angels who are also associated with these outcomes, as indeed will be planets. And nevertheless, certain gin are associated with certain illnesses. So you can see how they would be used in black magic. Indeed, it's probably this gin magic that's been responsible for the 12 years of mystery illnesses that I've suffered, that I believe animate from our neighbours in Jakarta. As I mentioned before, you don't really need to invoke gin using the Tawis, despite what uh, many Muslims claim this to be the case. Although in Shamsa Marif there are Tawis that are, which do invoke jinn. There aren't many, mostly using the 99 names of Allah, but there are some that do invoke jinn. And I'm not certain that these were actually written by al Buni, although they might have been. I mean, not all of Shams al Marif actually was written by al Buni, so, you know, it, it's debatable. Uh, which is why the protest of the detractors that jinns are mentioned in Tawis highlights their ignorance because, you know, you, you don't need to use Tawis to call them. And, and this leads me to think that these allegations are part of a Islamic satanic panic. Because if you want to petition or summon jinn, you tend to do it using incense and cosmic timing. Specific incense indeed will be associated with specific jinn. Uh, but a ge in general, frankincense is, is very popular. In, well, in Indonesia, frankincense is widely used for invoking jinn uh, and is very popular. And, and you will smell dukan, use frankincense oil like a perfume. Uh, jinn are also believed to come down to people through the ancestral line. Uh, this is based on the belief that you have a jinn as an ancestor. So in other words, there's a a common view within, particularly within Kajam, but it exists across much of Islam, uh, that some people, particularly Dukon, will marry jinn and have children, or, or the jinn or the, the, the human will have children of mixed, mixed race, mixed... <laughs> I don't know what you call it, well, mixed entity, <laughs> yeah. Or that the contact is passed down through you, or contract has been passed down through your ancestors. So, one, it could be it could be that you you were actually part jinn, or secondly, that one of your ancestors had a contract with the jinn, and not keeping one's word, not breaking the breaking the contract, even ancestral contracts, are very important. And and this is what is associated with what's seen as ancestral karma. Uh, sometimes this is actually a control, uh, you know, a control is placed upon you, but, but it could be done via a ring or a talisman. So it could be a ring or a talisman that's in your possession that's creating this. Certainly jinn are not normally seen as coming from Iblis or Satan um, within Islam. Although, as always, some Muslims would disagree with this and say that, yes, jinn are created by Iblis. Uh, and so, so jinn do lend themselves to the sort of satanic panic which surrounds the Shams al Meriv. Although, Iblis only suggests to humans that they should not submit to Allah within Islam. Uh, rather than the eternal fight between good and evil, uh, that Christians believe in. Well, I really hope you've enjoyed this vlog. And if you have, can you help me out a little? Subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, and then you'll be notified of future vlogs. But also hit the like button and make a comment uh, because these seem to be what determine the um, YouTube algorithm and I, I'm being really punished by it so whatever help I can get from you is, is so appreciated it really is I'm uh, when I started this I was going to do it uh, this this section the real magic of Java I was going to issue 
maybe t- every two three months now it's it's happening maybe every two or three days so yeah if you hit the bell you'll hear about it um and thank you so much thank you for listening really heartfelt thanks <laughs>